Good day everybody, just more Oxford College Physics here. We want to continue onward. So let's just go ahead and do that. What we want to do at this point is start discussing some particular forces that we'll, we'll commonly find in many different systems. So we'll start off just with a couple and over time we'll build up quite a few of them. But what we want to look at now are two specific forces. So we will be looking at what is known as the normal force and the gravitational force. And the way that we will be utilizing these is by just directly checking something out, right? So, grab something here real quick. Great. Elevated surface here. Check out this surface here. Great, we can see it. And I got a water bottle here. This water bottle has some amount of mass in it. And what I want to do is take this water bottle and I want to stick it, stick it on top of the surface. Look at it. There it is. I'm going to ask you something about what is happening to this water bottle. Are there any forces acting on it? And if so, what are they? And if so, what is the result of those forces? So, <clears throat> this water bottle sitting here, right? All right. Well, it's at rest. It's remaining at rest. From that, we can conclude that by Newton's first law, the net force on it has to be equal to zero. So either there's no forces at all acting on it, or the forces that are acting on it add up to be equal to zero, zero net force. So now let's think about well, forces in general. What constitutes a force, right? What kind of forces are there? Well, there's two general types. We've said that there are contact forces and there are field forces. Let's first look at a contact force here. Is there anything contacting this water bottle? And hopefully you say, yes, let's ignore air. Air is contacting the shirt. We'll ignore that. Is there anything else that you can see that may be contacting this water bottle? And hopefully you say, that green surface right there. The water bottle's in contact with it. They're exerting forces on one another. They're in contact. The forces that they exert on one another are equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. But let us just focus our attention on the water bottle itself. What forces are acting on the water bottle? Well, the surface here is exerting a force on it. That surface is pushing upward on this water bottle. And that we will call the normal force. So the force that a surface exerts on an object in contact with that surface is called the normal force. And you may see different notations for it from time to time. Generally, I use lowercase n hat to depict the normal force. Sometimes you'll see some f sub n or p hat get different representations of it symbolically. Normal force, normal force. Force of contact that a surface exerts on an object that is what we're contacting it. The normal force, you don't want to just say, hey, it's normal because there's abnormal forces, right? There's these crazy forces. No, that's not what normal means. Normal here means mathematically normal, perpendicular. The direction of the normal force is perpendicular to the surface at point points of contact. regarding the object. The 
normal means perpendicular to. So mathematically, normal, perpendicular to. So that's it. In this particular scenario right here, this is the surface. The normal force must be perpendicular to the surface. And since it's pushing up, perpendicular is oh, directly up, perpendicular to the plane of the surface. And since this is one plane, it's everywhere in contact with the bottle upward. That's great. Well, I can also have a normal force that isn't upward. I can go ahead and take something like this calculator. I can push it against this whiteboard here. And again, only considering the forces acting on this calculator, I'm pushing it that way. The whiteboard is pushing it back that way. Normal or perpendicular to the direction or plane of the whiteboard, but outward. So <clears throat> that's what we mean by normal force and how we depict it. So right now we've identified this. We take some object, take some, some horizontal surface here, Stick some object on it with mass M and say what forces are acting on this object. And we've concluded that there must be a force of contact acting on this object. And call that the normal force right there. We draw a little force diagram, a little picture of the object, and open arrow representing the vector force acting on it. Name it and hat so I know, hey, that's the normal force. Well, now comes to be the time when we want to figure out if there's any other forces acting on it. So, if there's a force of contact that's non-zero and there's no other forces acting, what would we, what would we end up getting? Look, if there's only one non-zero force, the net force couldn't be equal to zero, and thus we would get an acceleration out of this. There's no acceleration here. We have no change in motion, which should make us conclude there has to be another force acting on this, at least one, such that the net force is equal to zero. So since the velocity, or excuse me, acceleration of this object, a hat is equal to zero, thus sigma f hat must be zero. Net force is equal to zero. There has to be more than one force if n hat's acting. So we ask ourselves, is anything else contacting this object? And the answer to that again is no, this is the only thing touching it. So what other forces could there be? We've exhausted contact forces in this case. What other forces are there? That's right, there's field forces. And do we see any field forces acting? No, you don't see field forces. That's the whole point. They are not tangible, but we can see their effect. Well, how could I see the effect of it? I could put it on a scale. And what happens? The scale needle deflects because there's some force pulling downward on this mass. What do we call that force? We call it the gravitational force, right? That's it, the force due to gravity. So let us go ahead and draw that other force in and assume that now we've got a one force of contact, one field force, those are the only two forces acting, which means then that the force due to gravity would have to be straight down, which indeed it is. You should already know that that should be the case. And we'll name it something. So here, we'll say that this is F sub G hat. F sub G hat is the force due to gravity. That's how we'll name it. Well, that's great. What do we have with all of this at this point? We've got two forces acting, right? In this case, we have two forces acting such that net force is equal to n hat plus f sub g hat. Net force is equal to the sum of all the forces acting, which is these two forces. Those are the only two forces acting. What do they have to add up to be? They have to add up to be equal to zero because there is no acceleration that's occurring. We have a perpetual state of stillness, if you will. All right, so 
With this in mind, we can get then that the normal force, the force of the surface, has to exert, force that the surface has to exert on this object must be equal in magnitude in the opposite direction to the normal force, excuse me, to the gravitational force. The question then becomes, what is the gravitational force? Is there some way that we can figure out what that is? So, I guess I'll just use this. So this is a nice mass right here. It's one kilogram. And what I want to do with this is I want to examine what the gravitational force is. What is the force due to gravity? If there's some way that I can mathematically represent it. Well, I got a certain mass here, right? What happens if I let go of this mass? I say, well, then it's in free fall. That's great. What's the acceleration of the mass if I let go of it? You say, oh, it's the acceleration of gravity, g, because it's in free fall, right? I say, correct. If the only force acting on it is gravity, the force due to gravity, and the acceleration due to gravity is indeed g. What do we have that the force due to gravity is? Net force produces the acceleration of the mass. What net force is acting on this mass? That's right, force due to gravity. So if I just take the mass and only let gravity act on it, what do we have? Freely falling object. Has only the force due to gravity acting on it. So, we must have F sub G hat like that, right? Good. And what do we know? Well, we know that the net force produces the acceleration of the mass by Newton's second law. And in this particular case, if only the gravitational force acts, then the net force is the gravitational force, right? F sub G hat. Only force acting. What acceleration do we get? Well, A hat goes to negative G hat for free fall. There is the acceleration, right, due to gravity. So what happens with this? We've got ourselves that the net force is M times G hat. Net force is equal to F sub G hat. That's how we're naming it. And this is what the force F sub G hat must then be equal to. Thus, F sub G hat is equal to MG hat. That's how we extract out the force due to gravity acting on some mass M. So overall, we can write it like that, or we can write that F sub G hat is equal to negative mg j hat because we know that g hat is well, negative g j hat. Stick with it like that. Force due to gravity is in the negative j hat direction downward and has a magnitude of mg. Magnitude of f sub g is just mg. This is also the weight of an object. mass n. The force due to gravity acting on the object is what gives the object its weight. If we take it far out in space where there's no gravitational field, it still has the same amount of mass, but it doesn't weigh anything. It's weightless. Take it to the moon, it weighs much, much less. Same amount of mass though. It depends what the gravitational acceleration is. You stand on a scale and the scale reads something because gravity's pulling you down against the scale of some amount of force. How much force? This much. Mg. There you go. There's the gravitational force and how we extract out the idea of weight. Wi ghT. Sorry about that. So if you're ever told the weight of an object, you should be able to deduce what its mass is because its mass then is equal to the force due to gravity acting divided by g. So if we know the force due to gravity acting, i.e. its weight, divided by the gravitational acceleration, 
we then know the mass of the object. And that's what scales basically are doing. Anyways, that's good. So let's return. Return to this. Well, we've got this case here. Remove this now. We've got this case where we've got the two forces acting, the gravitational force and the normal force. They have to be adding up to be equal to zero. So what do we get? Well, if this plus this is equal to zero, we've got the n hat is equal to negative f sub g hat. Well, what does that mean? Magnitude, or excuse me, the normal force is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the gravitational force. Because we can write this as that n hat is equal to negative, and then f sub g hat is minus mg j hat. Minus minus gives us plus. And there we can quantify the normal force. That is the force that the surface must exert on the object to keep the object from going through the surface. What happens if the surface couldn't build up this amount of normal force? Well, the integrity of the surface would be compromised. It breaks, it cracks, it crumbles, the object falls through it or undergoes some deformation until it can produce this, the enough force to actually hold it. I take a big stick like this and I start adding more and more mass to the center of it. Eventually what happens? It starts bowing and eventually, once I get too much, it snaps because it can't bear the weight of the object. Generally, not even generally, say this, the normal force is a reactive force. You put something on an object, it's got to react in order to keep the object in contact with that surface. You push down harder on the object, the normal force has to push back in the opposite direction, such that the object stays in contact with the surface. It builds up to match the force being pushed against it by the object. There's generally some sort of breaking point for a given object itself, given surface. If you hit a surface too hard, you push on it with too much force, its integrity can be compromised. And that's kind of structural stuff. Nonetheless, it's good to start to think about. All right, so let's some normal force. And yeah, gravitational force. Those are going to be two really important forces that we deal with in many systems. Anytime an object's on a surface, there's a normal force. Anytime we're locally close to Earth, which will be almost all of the time, there's a gravitational force that should be taken into some consideration. Some of it depends whether it has something to do with the motion of the object, but it's there. So don't just neglect it. It's one of the pertinent forces. All right, so we'll take a little look at a problem involving some of this normal force, gravitational force stuff, quantification, and we'll move on. Be right back.